everyone is resting on their feet, when Ezra opened the book of the law, the people stood. I know you've been up and down, but I promise you, after this last stand, you can stand because you just want to. We started a new series of messages last week called Code of Honor, and we talked about honor the process. Today, I want you to go to the New Testament. Peter, Apostle Peter, Amen. old cussing Peter, <laughs> cutting off folks' ears and just cutting up, but he walked on water too now. Amen. Peter was so anointed, his shadow was knocking folk out in the flow. I'm telling you, he was anointed. Sometimes the worst ones end up being the most anointed. <laughs> Amen, somebody. The ones that everybody wrote off. The one that's denying and running back to the, to the club. Be the next apostle. <laughs> Ask your neighbor, are you the next apostle? Don't answer them. Because there's a price for that now. It's a price. All right. First Peter 2, 17 and 18. And I want all of us to read this together. I encourage you at your leisure to read all of First Peter and Second Peter as he is talking to Asia Minor. It's a community of believers. He's talking to them and giving them pertinent words that are essential. If you got 1 Peter 2, 17 and 18, say, I got it. And on the count of three, we are going to read this in concert. One, two, three. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. The forward means harsh, harsh. He said, I want you to be, I want you to be an individual that honors the good and the bad. Those that are harsh, I want you to honor them as well. Amen. That's really something. Now you read it because I asked you. Now this time, let's read it together and read it with authority. One, two, three. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear. Not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward, which is harsh. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we're going to talk about today unlocking the code of honor. Unlocking the code. There is a code that the Holy Spirit revealed to me this week that unlocks and gives you access. Anytime something is locked, you cannot get in. But unlocking it gives you access into something. And God says, I am giving the people, my people, the code to unlock honor. Let's pray. Spirit of the living God, we thank you once again for how you have already moved in this service. You've already answered. You've already lifted up the heavy burden. Given garments of praise for spirit of heaviness. Now as we delve into this subject matter. Speak out of our mouth like fire. In such a way that will birth forth transformation. And also revelation concerning the code. A code that is needed. So they can move forward to the next level and dimension. In the matchless and precious name of Jesus the Christ. Can you give God your best praise right here? Hallelujah. Come on, give him your best praise. Come on, give him your best praise. Yeah. 
You may be seated. So today's lesson is going to be equivalent to a mentoring class. It's interesting, uh, yesterday as we were all in the van, we start talking a little bit about mentorship. Mentorship is simply learning from the pain of another. Let me say that again. Mentorship is simply learning from the pain of another. If you listen to it and get it, you will not have to go down that pain road. It's called wisdom, and it is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all thy getting, we want to get understanding. Once again, any time that we are unlocking something, we unlock it so we can have access. And I have been in situations when, um, I'm going to use for illustration being at the gym, and I accidentally locked my keys in the locker, and I had to go get the manager so they could unlock so I could have access to my things and that's what the Holy Spirit is saying to us I'm going to give you a code and it is pertinent to unlock so you can get to the next level next dimension it is essential that you hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto the church what is honor I think that is a very good question. Honor is a language. It is a language that reflects character. Honor is a language that reflects character. And honor is also a system of beliefs. It is the way you think. And how you think ultimately is going to come out of your mouth. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And it's also going to show up in your actions. This is important. It is my rule of thumb that uh, when you honor something, you pay attention to it. You celebrate it. Huh? Uh, you have confidence in it and you handle it appropriately. You give it glory. You give it prestige. When you truly honor something, uh, you take care of it. We refer to it as TLC, tender loving care. Let's go deeper. Uh, what can honor do for you? Honor is a seed, wonderful people, that can come back to you in a harvest of favor and a harvest of promotion a harvest of commendation dishonor is also a seed that will come back to you in a harvest of tragedy and loss so what we want to practice sowing the seed of honor so we can reap Honor. Somebody say amen. amen. When it comes to dishonor, please understand that normally it has a lot to do with pride. So pride is also a seed that will come back to you in a harvest of humiliation. Let me say that again. That pride is a seed that will come back to you in a harvest of humiliation. Many people don't know this and some do not believe it. But your code of honor can make the difference in prosperity and poverty. Let me say that again. Your code of honor can make the difference from you receiving prosperity or living a life of poverty. Your future is determined by who you choose to honor. Your future is determined by who you have chosen to honor. Let me say it the third time. Your future is determined by who you have chosen to honor. Let's go deeper. Honor can birth a long life. Honor can birth a long life. 
can you give me proof of that? Absolutely. Proverbs 3 and also Psalms 91 talks about honoring the laws of God and dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. And he says, with long life will I satisfy thee because you honor my laws. With long life will I satisfy thee because you dwell in the secret place of the Most High. With long life, somebody say long life. How many in this place desire to have a long life? Not just a long life, but a long good life. It's, not, it's one thing to have a long life, but we want to have a long good life. Uh, let's go deeper. If you want a long life, according to Ephesians 6 and 1, it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy mother and father, which is the first commandment with promise. Check it out. That it may go well with you and you will live long on the earth. Some of the reason it may not be going well with you is because you do not honor your parents. I think I better say that again. Some of the reason why it may not be going well with you right now is because you don't honor your parents. Some of the reason why that you are reaping back through your children from the seeds you sown is because you did not honor your parents. Oh, I'm going there today. At times, I will receive a whisper from the Holy Spirit of God. When someone has transitioned out of time into eternity, and I will hear the Holy Spirit, because I'm saying they too young, and I will hear they did not honor their parents. Your life can be cut short because you do not honor your parents. Oh, wonderful people of God on today. Find a way to honor your parents. You may have to do it from a distance, but find a way to honor your parents. Even if they have issues with you or you have issues with them, find a way to honor your parents. Uh, I hear somebody saying they don't even honor themselves. That's none of your business. Find a way to honor your parents your parents and as you honor your parents God says I will satisfy you with long life sometimes your hurt your bitterness your brokenness is a direct result of the relationship you have or have had with your parents Oh, I better say that again. Your bitterness, your brokenness, your hurt may be directly connected to how you feel about your parents. I can always tell when people start dishonoring authority, if you go back in their past just a little bit, you'll discover that they have issues with one or both of the parents. But on today, Today, God has given you a freedom word that if you want to move forward in life and be satisfied with long life to honor your parents. I know I just hit something by the way you looking. That means God says I want you to get it together in this area. You at a standstill because you do not honor your parents. Let's go deeper. The scripture says honor all men. Uh, I want you to say that with me. Honor all men, not some men, not the men that you like, but the Bible says to honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king, servants, be submissive to your masters with all respect. <clears throat> Honor all men, not just the ones that you like, uh, not that you honor the actions of sinners, but you honor the humanity of sinners. Oh, my goodness. You don't honor the 
actions, but you honor that they are human. Oh God, Lord, help us today. You don't become mean and hateful because people don't see life from your perspective. Oh no, they don't read the Bible. That's their business. It is our responsibility. It is a command and a mandate that we honor all men. This is the call of God to the church to honor all men. Then it says love the brotherhood. The brotherhood is us. We have the responsibility of being an example to the believer and word, charity, deed, and conversation. Our actions towards each other should make the world jealous. Oh God, how we handle one another because we are to love the brotherhood. Galatians 6 and 10 says, so then as we have opportunity, let us do good to everybody, everyone. And then it says, especially to the household of faith. Lord have mercy. How you are treating your brothers and sisters needs to be an example to the world. How you handle them. I don't like them. The Bible says especially to the household of faith. I, I don't know about them. Shut your mouth and be a light to the world. Shut your mouth and be the salt of the earth. We have a responsibility to share our love. Our heart should be full of love and it should be an example. Be an example. An example. Not just to the household of faith, but be an example to your children. Be an example to your co-workers. Be an example while you at Walmart. Be an example while you at the grocery store. Let your light so shine that men will see the good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Somebody show hallelujah. Let's go deeper. The Bible says to honor the king. The king would be our president of the United States. If he walked in the door right now, I will put the microphone down to honor the president of the United States. It takes nothing from me because I already know who I am. I am a child of God. But if you pay attention to Jesus' actions, he always honored the protocol. He honored the king. He paid taxes. So much so, he said, go on down there and, and, and the first fish that you catch, take the money out of the fish's mouth. Wow, that blows my mind. It's not even on the notes that God know how to take care of you in strange places. Lord, have, have mercy. He knows how to take care of you as places that you deem as insignificant. He knows how to go right in the fish's mouth. He said, I will supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. He know how to hide the $50 right in the back of the closet so you need it at the pertinent time. He know how to hide the money or give a, 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 one of those God bless Bless your handshakes. Have you ever had one of those? Uh, oh, God bless your handshake. And then it was something on the on the inside of the palm, and you open it up. It's an a hundred dollar bill. I've been that done that. Got a t-shirt. God knows how to bless you. He knows insignificant places, secret places that He have hid from you. Treasures He's locked. He know how to bless you. Somebody show hallelujah. <laughs> Then it says, servants be submissive, uh oh, to with respect. This means those that are employees, you should honor your boss or your manager. Some of y'all just backslid. Right there, as soon as I said that, you are supposed to honor your boss and your manager. That means you show up on time, saints. Because sometimes the, the, the latest ones are the saints. Why y'all quiet all of a sudden? Somebody say, help me, Lord. 
And then footnote, I want you to pay attention. As Peter is talking, once again, he is talking to a community of believers. He's not talking to the heathens. He's talking to the church. Most of the Bible is written to the church. Very few times he's talking to sinners. When it comes to sinners, he's saying repent. But most of the Bible, especially when you get into the New Testament, is letters that are written to the church. How we are to conduct ourselves. How we are to handle one another. Now, let's go deeper with this because I got to get something to you. Uh, the Bible says we are also called to honor those that have achieved attainments. Uh, scholastically achieved. Uh, in in area, any area, we don't worship people because they have uh, achieved but we honor them and so we don't judge those that have come to a place in life at 34 years old worth 1.4 billion dollars that is invited to perform at the uh, uh, football game the Super Bowl we don't take judgment against somebody what we do is learn from the one that is worth 1.4 billion dollars at 34 years old that has a great credit score. You all got mighty quiet on that one. But we are to honor, we are to show honor to our children when they get ready to graduate. And we honor our children or some of you all that are, will be graduating from higher learning. You honor them for their achievements because any degree is an earned degree. It was not given to you. You had to work. You had to work at the midnight hour. There were three and four classes and one teacher could care less about what another gave you for homework it was work and you had to put it in or you wouldn't achieve so it is appropriate to honor those that have achieved and then it's appropriate to honor those uh, uh, that work in the kingdom first Peter 5 17 says the elders who direct affairs of the church are worthy of double honor especially those that labor in word and doctrine we should honor those that are preachers and teachers of this word and he gave some apostles prophets evangelists pastors teachers for the perfecting of the saints but hear me when I tell you I can tell you as your pastor it is labor and it is work because if I am going to feed you a real good meal I just can't buy a sermon from someone else but I got to lay before God and say what does restoration life need this week I got to sp I said Lord speak to my heart show me which way to go lay it out before me so I can feed you know who's gonna show up on Sunday so I can't be playing around with your soul that's why I say when I come to church don't play with me preacher I need the word because the word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my pathway speak to my heart Holy Spirit and give me a word that brings forth life and that more abundantly I esteem your word above my necessary food I got to have the word somebody shout I got to have the word don't play with me today I need this word if I don't have the word I will back slide if I don't have the word I'll go back to the street if I don't have the word I'll start cussing if I don't have the word I'll slap you into the middle of next year I got to have the word the word have I here in my heart that I should not sin against thee somebody say the word I gotta have the word I live by the word I gotta drink this word somebody shout the word gotta have it so it is important that I have this word Matthews 4, 10 and 41 says whoever welcomes a prophet has a prophet will receive a prophet's reward and whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward well most of us are asking what is the reward I'm glad you asked 2nd Chronicles 2020 
21, he says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. But believe in his prophets, and so shall ye prosper. And the word has all to do with belief. Do you believe? And with belief comes honor. Whoever gives honor to the elder or to the prophet, there will be a reward in the form of prosperity. Prosperity may come in different ways. It may come as understanding or wisdom that you need concerning pertinent decisions that you have to make. Prosperity may be in the form of better health. It may be for open doors or commendations. You just never know as you honor the men and women of God. God says if you receive a prophet, you're going to get a prophet's reward. He said, I'll open doors for you. It's not about what they're doing. It's how you honoring the men and women of God. Let me clean that up. It's not about what they are doing. Sometimes we paying attention too much of what they doing. God said, I didn't tell you to worry about that. Miriam got in trouble with God because she was all off in Moses' business. Get out of their business. They have a right to marry whoever they want to marry. They have a right to see whoever they want to see. My responsibility to you and what I'm endowing you with is to honor the apostle, honor the prophet, honor the evangelist, honor the pastor, honor the teacher, honor one another. And God says, as you sow the seed of honor, I'm going to give it back to you in good measure. Press down, shaking together, and running over. I'm going to cause favor to hit your bosom. Some, anybody want favor in this place? Somebody show hallelujah. Ooh, let's go deeper. Honor is the seed for adaptation. Honor is the seed for adaptation. Adaptation is the seed for access. What is adaptation? Another word for adaptation is change. You will not get to the next level without change. <laughs> Where you're trying to go. I'm sorry, you're not going to get there without making a significant change. Without making change, there will be no next. Without making change, there will be no next level. Without uh, uh, making change, there will be no open doors. There, there will be no next dimension. I know you think you're going to get there without making the change. But I beg to differ with you. You are going to have to make some changes. Oh, let's pull in Brother Joseph. Joseph had to make some changes. He was in in prison in prison when the Pharaoh heard that he could interpret dreams check out what Genesis 41 14 says so Pharaoh sent for Joseph and he was quickly brought from the dungeon when 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 he shaved and changed his clothes then he came before Pharaoh you are are going to have to shave and change your clothes. Oh, let me go a little bit deeper. You will not go to the next level and you don't curtail your actions. You don't curtail that tongue. You are going to stay in the same position. When God opened the door this time, you're going to have to make some changes and you're going to have to do it quickly. You're not going to have to think about it. You're not going to say, mother, may I, brother, whether you think. No, you're going to have to make some changes quickly because that's how the door is going to be open to you this time. It's going to be a quick 
door. So it's got to be a quick response and a quick change. You may have to say bye-bye to your good Judy and bye-bye to your road dog. Later, Gator, after a while, crocodile, I got to make some changes. I love you. I'll talk to you later. But I got to make some changes. Look at your neighbor for the first time and say, you're going to have to make some changes. Oh, quick changes. The same thing happened to Ruth. Uh, Naomi spoke to Ruth and said, you got to clean up, girl. Get yourself together and anoint yourself. Change your clothes. And when you get to Boaz's feet, lay right there and shut your mouth. Don't just say a word. Because that's how we get into a whole lot of trouble is opening our mouth before the time. Esther had to do the same thing. Oh, no, you're not going before the king like that. Twelve months of process. Twelve months of bathing. Twelve months of herbs. No, you got to be purified before you go to the king. And some of you all in this place got an appointment with the king. And God is saying to you, you got to get yourself together now. Because when I give you access, you got to be ready. When I give you access, you got to be in the right position. Uh, your mindset, you got to be right. Your dress got to be right. God says, I'm getting ready to open a door. You got an appointment. Oh, Lord, I was trying to teach, but y'all making me happy and pulling the preacher up out of me. Somebody so hallelujah yeah adaptation adaptation means change and if you don't change you are gonna forfeit the opportunity oh god help us today if you don't change you are gonna forfeit the opportunity that you have been waiting for all your life all this time the children of israel did it they got right in the wilderness that should have taken 11 days and they ended up 40 years in the wilderness because they would not change. If you, Me, if I'm 40, 40 more years, that means I'm going to be 94 years old. I don't have that type of time. And most of y'all in this place, unless you too, don't have that type of time either. attention as we go deeper into this uh, Joseph did not go before the Pharaoh talking about his past he didn't go before the Pharaoh talking about how his brothers treated him he didn't go before the Pharaoh and said I ended up in jail because Potiphar's wife lied on me no he went before the Pharaoh listening to what the Pharaoh needed uh, he had read the atmosphere and some of us get in trouble because we are not discerning we don't read the atmosphere when God opens an, a, a door for you shut your mouth and listen to the atmosphere listen to what the Pharaoh wants when when God presents new doors make sure you enter listening and Joseph did not go before the king telling him what he wanted he listened to what the Pharaoh wanted and read the atmosphere oh you speak when you are spoken to I'm giving you a mentorship class because a door is about to be opened and I don't don't want you to mess it up. Look at your neighbor for the second time and say, don't mess this up. This blessing is for you and it got your name on it. You waited and waited, prayed and cried and it got your name on it, but you needed this mentorship class. Oh, you would be surprised how many people have messed up their blessing. Uh oh, here it comes with too much mouth you're just talking too much your your mouth and your actions are messing you up they were really happy when you uh, uh, came to the organization they were really happy when they hired you because of but because of your mouth and your actions 
actions, they now see you as a liability and not an asset. They now see you as an individual that's needy. Lord, have mercy. I have done this before. I walked before kings and I didn't know where I was. And I started talking about my past, talking about what I was going through. And instead of them liking me, they saw me as a liability. Let me tell you something. The only thing you got to do for this next blessing is shut your mouth. Say nothing. Just look pretty and look handsome. And walk in there like a big bowl of shot cola. And let God bless you. Good God from glory, y'all pulling this up out of me. Only thing you got to do is change and watch God work. Of the atmosphere that God has placed you in. Oh God, for my people, come on, Hosea, I've destroyed for the lack of knowledge. When you haven't been mentored and trained appropriately, you end up hurting yourself. And knowledge is the seed for change. Let me say it again. Knowledge is the seed for change. You need more knowledge. Knowledge is the seed for change. And when I ask somebody, let me tell you something. When I ask somebody to do something and I see that they don't do it, I have already said in my heart that this individual does not honor me. And sooner or later, there's going to be conflict. I'm going to see it in your actions. I'm going to see it in your lateness. I'm going to see it in how you whispering about me. And you don't think I know, but I'm a discerning man. I can tell when you got something going on. You're trying to put something together. You're trying to have a little group you putting together. And you think I don't see, but I got a discerning eye, baby. I can tell, but every demonic rat is going to be sent up out of here. Every demonic witch is going to hit the door. Every pretender is going to get up out of my face because I've come too far for you to get up in here and want to start some conflama. I've been through too much. I'll fight you like an alley cat. Somebody show hallelujah. I said I'll fight you like an alley cat. Don't you get it twisted. I'm not fighting by myself. I didn't send me to Peoria. God did. In fact, God will say stop out of the way. I got this. Anybody that's in your way, I'll send them this way to the north. This way to the south. This way to the east. And this way to the west. So I to tell whoever it is don't you get it twisted and don't you get in God's way because I didn't send me to Peoria God did and because God did it he said I'm getting ready to bless this church pressed out shaking together and running over look at the neighbor for the third time and say you ain't seen nothing yet Nothing, 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 nothing. No, 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 no. And I, how I know? Because of all the hell I've been through in my life just to get to you. And the hell that I paid when I crossed over into Peoria. But I'm anointed. That's why I'm still here. That's why I'm still preaching. That's why I'm still declaring. That's why I'm still decreeing. Cause I'm anointed and devils start trembling because I'm anointed the atmosphere changes because I'm anointed look at your neighbor and say I'm anointed somebody shout yes somebody shout yes I'm anointed I'm anointed by God oh no 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 this ain't coke it's anointing uh, this ain't Pepsi it's anointing this ain't weed it's anointing what is the anointing it's the Holy Spirit
spirit of God. Lord have mercy. The paracletes of God that walks on the right side of me. What is the anointing? It's the devil chasing, mountain moving, Holy Ghost power, dunamis power, exousia power. Somebody shout, I'm anointed. So it is so important to understand that there is a code. And God says, I want you to give the code so the people of God can unlock, unlock the code for honor. Because it was demonstrated with Joseph. It was a code. It was a code, Pastor Trina. It was a code, Minister Scott. It was a code. We've been reading this for years and never knew that there was a code to this next level. And Joseph demonstrated it to us. Well, Brother Preacher, what is the code? <clears throat> R U S T Trust Can you be trusted at this next level? Can you be trusted with what God's about to do? Check out Joseph. He was handed the entire country of Egypt. Second person, the prime minister of Egypt from the jail cell to the palace. Can God trust you at the next level? Can God trust you at the next dimension? Are you trustworthy? Are you reliable? Can I depend on you? Can you do what I asked you to do and be where you say you're going to be? Are you a man or woman of your word? Can you be trusted? You were shouting real good 10 minutes ago, but now you're examining yourself because can you be trusted at the king's table? Can you be trusted? Can I give you the keys to my house and don't worry about you going through my stuff or something coming up missing? Can I give you the keys to my car and you come back on time? Can you be trusted with this weight of responsibility? Can you be trusted? Because God says, I'm not going to give this blessing to a fool. That's why you're still in the waiting line. Because I know you can't be trusted. And when I see you can be trusted to handle responsibility, handle weight, handle people, honor people. When I see that you're not cussing people out in your heart, then I will release to you. The issue with you is I can't trust you. Are you trustworthy? Oh, somebody say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Your Lord. gift will make room for you and bring you before great men that your character will kill the opportunity. Yeah, my God. My God. My God. Yeah. Ooh, y'all was, yeah. was doing all of that a few minutes ago. But can you be trusted? There's only a few people that got the keys to this church. Because I know that I can trust them. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I 
I know when I come to this church, everything is going to look like the way we left it. I know nobody going to be trying to go into the office and start searching around. Can you be trust? Some of y'all don't trust y'all children. Uh-uh, if I'm leaving up out of here, boo-boo, you leaving too. I don't know where you're going, but you're coming up out of here. You love them. You love them dearly. But you know you can't trust them because they are not responsible. Oh, God. And some of you all say, I don't care what you're saying. I'm going to do the way I want it because I'm me. Everybody got to accept me and me. Check this out. Check this out what I'm about to say. Some change I am totally convinced people will ever see in life is death. Some change, because some folk will not change. They just not, the only change, change they will ever see is death. Because they refuse to make the change. They refuse, and God says, if I can't trust you, the only reason God released me to this level of glory it's because he saw he could ha I could handle it. Uh -huh, that's right. And where we getting ready to go? He's saying, I want you to possess the land. He's saying it again. To possess the land. He's saying it again. He's saying it again. Possess the land. And he's saying it, he said, because I see my son can now handle it. Uh -huh. yes. 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 He learned from his mistakes. He's not going to go into the business meeting saying too much. That's right. He's not going to be talking about what one of the members did. Makes no never mind. I'm at a business meeting. Ooh, I hope I'm helping y'all. I hope I'm helping y'all today because this is where we mess up all the time. We go before the Pharaoh, the king, the president, the manager, the hiring manager, coming in there dressed any old kind of way, and we're chewing gum, and your resume look like a puzzle, and you have fragments and run-on sentences, and nobody helped. You didn't even go to Google to help you. You insisting on going to the next level without change. You can't go before a Fortune 500 and you just said, I'm going to do it my way. You miss the opportunity. You don't even know how to talk. talking way up here and you come in here talking like shenane <laughs> Jerome's in the house I say Jerome's in the house you lost get out security security Some of you all, you don't even realize when God brought you here, he replanted you. He replanted you. One plants, one waters. When you get to the watering stage, check it out, you are at another level of receiving. Because God says you're getting ready to grow. You can't keep talking about what happened yesteryear. It makes no never mind. It's over with. God bless. See you later. That's it. It's over. Ooh, that'll preach all by itself. Look at your neighbor for the fifth time and say it's over. I'm moving on. I'm not going to stay talking about the same old thing. My conversation has changed. My action has changed. In fact, I go to a new restaurant. I'm like Patty LaBelle. I got a new hairdo. I got a new dress, a new thought, a new purpose. And I can't keep going back to talking about what happened yesterday. New. No! I can't do it.
I can't do it. So now that you're marinating in that word trust, because you was about to take off. Woo! Until I said trust. Because half of us can't be trusted. Can't be trusted. But Mark, you got the, that's your son. You love your son. But you wouldn't give him the keys to the car right now. Liam cannot have the keys to the car. See? In about 10 years, we'll go through driving school. But right now, you're not getting behind the wheel. And you do that because you love him. Not God don't hate you. He loves you. But can you handle what you're asking for? Oh, I got one. Can you handle what you call to? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on now. That's good. That's good. Come on. One of the reasons why I could not handle what I was called to, because I didn't want it. I didn't want it. Oh, trust me. See, that's why when, when I see my members, I be like, mm, you don't want this. But you're going to be processed. Now, you can do this the easy way or the hard way. The choice is yours. Because if the call of God is on your life, oh, best believe you're going to do what God. Well, I, I thought we had a free will. You do. But there was a man that had a free will that decided that he was going to get on the boat and do his own thing. That, what's his name again? Jonah. Jonah. He ended up in Whale University. And then come out, he came out on the third day saying yes to God. God know how to get right on up in your Kool-Aid. He know how to rattle your chain. He know what just what to do. He know a time out for you that you ain't never experienced before. He know just the belt to, to get your tail up under control. I'm just going, I don't want to do, no, no, I'm, I'm just going to, see, I've been there. I've done that. I got a t-shirt. I wasn't trying to pastor. <laughs> Preach. <laughs> and I knew I was called when I was eight. But I messed around and went to college. I lost my mind. Yeah, college to do it to you, and I'm telling you, ooh, I was part. <laughs> Hear me. I was all on the dance floor. Shirt was off because I was cut, you know. I was all on the pole. I was. Why y'all look at me? I came up in the, I still like house music to this day. I came up in, anybody like house music? Save all your love for me. Y'all know nothing about that, anyway. Y'all know nothing, nothing about it, nothing about it. But I love house music. You put some house music on right now, I'm liable to pull the car over. <laughs> it's time for the percolate. It's time for the percolate. Y'all know nothing about it. Y'all don't know nothing about it. See? Yeah. <laughs> check, wait, 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 wait. And what was real sad about it, I would be in there doing all that, and somebody would walk up to me like, why are you in here? Who are you in doing there? Aren't you called to preach? Shut up and get out of my face. One time I, I, I was skating, I was getting my skate on, and I felt the anointing of God come over me. I was like, oh God. I had to go in the bathroom and give somebody a word from the Lord right at the skating rink. My God, my God. My God, my God. Right at the skating rink.
skating rink. You do it. So you really can't. So I got a question. Why well, we done laughed and thought about it? Can you be trusted? I know you want to preach. Can you be trusted to study? Can you be trusted to be submitted? Because, see, my preachers don't understand. I'm nice. I really am. All y'all that admire Bishop Jakes, y'all don't know him. Because he will fire you on his way to the pulpit. Bishop Jakes don't play. And I'll be saying, I said, no, I'm not interested in the fight. I'm going to wait till they tell us on fire. Because I'm not chasing you down the street. I'm not going to do it. Because I'm not your God. I'm your pastor. I'm not going to be calling you on the phone. Now, you coming to church, you know, you're not supposed to be here for Bible class. Are you coming to the minister's meeting? I'm not going to do it. How bad do you want it? I'm not going to do it. When you make up in your mind that I'm ready and I can be trusted, you will find your way. You will beat me to the church. You will beat me. When you make up your, oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. When you finally made up your mind, okay, I'm going to school. I, uh, uh, I am going to school. I got to do what I got to do. You went to school. You could have been dropped out 5, 10, 20 years. But when you said I'm going, you went and you finished. So I, I, I didn't want to really preach because y'all was pulling it out of me. I wanted, I wanted to teach this as a mentorship class because this code, if, listen, Joseph had a went in there and did anything outside of what he was asked to do, he risked being killed. Don't kill your promise. You never know who God is going to use. You want a certain person of a certain race, of a certain, you a certain a woman or a man. Listen, any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. I would have never imagined it never crossed my mind that I would be in Peoria. Amen. Amen. It never came to me. I was talking to, to, to Kevin, and Kevin was sharing with me about him and Brother Sean and Heretta, Minister Heretta. They was all at the same building, same job in Chicago. They never once thought, it never even came across their mind that the company was going to suggest, and none of them was going to church. It was not Minister Heretta. It was Heretta with her cigarette and her drink. Am I right, Kevin? Talking that stuff. Kevin tickled me. He said, I saw Sean in church. I was like, what you doing here? <laughs> really? <laughs> they was not even serving the Lord. And they shifted over here. I never saw them in Chicago. I was there all my life. When the Lord opened the door for me, listen up. To change. This is what I'm getting ready to say. To change my life and open doors. It scared the living daylights out of me because a real move of God will scare you. You have not experienced a move until you've been scared. 
It means you have no control. And some of y'all trying to control this next blessing. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. I had to, I moved to California. One of the times I drove there, three days, by myself. I've had too many people. How did you do that, the Lord? When I got out of the boundaries of Illinois, I knew God was with me. I drove through the Rockies. I was doing about 90 by myself. My yep, the police stopped me. <laughs> I said, sir, I'm alone and I'm trying to get to California. He said, just slow it down. Amen. I got out and I looked at the mountains and I had an experience with God. I knew God was more real at that point than I had ever known in my life. It scared me so I was at the, I was the pastor of worship at my wife's church for, it was, she wasn't my wife then, it was just some lady. <laughs> but two, to a church about 2,000 people. Amen. And I was the pastor of worship. Amen. It so scared me because I knew nobody. Even the couple of people I thought I knew, I found out I didn't know them either. Amen. Amen. And the, 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 the executive administrator, because I had my own office, came in the office and I just burst into tears. Because I knew God was up to something, I just didn't understand what he was up to. And I had no control. Some of you all, are missing your opportunity because you're trying to control it. I'm trying to control it. Take your hands off the steering wheel and let God drive you into your next. Let him be the eternal GPS system. Some of you all have missed where you were supposed to stop. Yeah. And the GPS is saying, make a U. U and go back. Go back. Come on, Pastor. I'm saying this to you today as a mentorship class. I really didn't want to scream this and holler it. I just got happy. It don't take much to get happy. <laughs> I wanted to talk to you. Because sometimes we shout and we fall out and run and we be in the same place next week. Right, right, right. Some of you all are so far behind. You know you you are, you know you brilliant. You know it. But you insist in staying in the basement. It's nothing down there but dog bones. And you keep having relationship with the dogs. And mad at them when you should be mad at yourself. This is the season to come out of the basement. Can you come out of there? Some of y'all, y'all got one foot up here and the other foot in the basement. Come on. So we don't know who you are day to day. Because one foot is up here and the other foot is in the basement. And God says, I can't trust you. Check it out. Look at look 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 at me. It cannot be from a perspective. Well, that means I got to be perfect. When God says be perfect, he's asking you to be mature. He's saying grow up. <clears throat> Put away childish things. You're going to make mistakes. That's why you have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. When you fall, dust yourself off. 
pick yourself up and get back up and keep it moving. Don't carry no guilt. Don't carry no shame. Dust yourself off. Yes, sir. Get back in line. Yes, sir. Keep on walking. Where you make your mistake is stopping. Yes. Right. Can you be trusted? Put your hands together and give God praise. Hallelujah. Unlocking the code of honor. Unlocking the code of honor. There is a code. 